Hello students and welcome to the 2015 semester 2 final study guide. Um, as it says up here, your final will consist of everything we've covered second semester um, up to chapter 24 in your textbook. Um, you guys are expected to use your textbook, any previous assignments, shared presentations to prepare, but this will be the main avenue for you guys to prepare. Um, for all topics, prepare for everything, who, what, when, where, why. Um, but this is your guide. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, this was covered first semester, but when we did civil rights, we mentioned these things several times throughout um, this whole second semester. So the easiest way to remember it, guys, is just real short and simple to the point. 13th, abolish slavery. Um, the 14th is equal protection under the law. And the 15th is the voting rights. Um, now, that does not include women, but voting rights for African Americans. The next topic is the Viet Cong. These were Vietnamese guerrilla fighters um, that were fighting against the U.S. and the South Vietnamese forces during the Vietnam War. Next topic is the Lend-Lease Act. Now, this is um, during World War II. It was prior to World War II. It was a deal made between the U.S. and Great Britain. And basically what this said was that we would give Great Britain war supplies. Um, in exchange, they would give us um, some access to some naval bases that would help set us up for later in the war. Pearl Harbor, um, mentioned several times, obviously, the Japanese attack um, on our naval base in Hawaii. The date, December 7th, 1941, is one that we should remember. We don't have a lot of dates to remember, but that's one. December 7th, 1941 brought us into World War II. Uh, back to Vietnam here. Let's go impact of television on the Vietnam War. So this was kind of the first time that um, the brutality, the blood of war was actually shown on TV. Television was a very, very big influence in the Vietnam War. Um, brought it into people's living rooms for the first time and had a huge impact on people's attitudes and uh, just general thoughts on the war. D-Day, um, this will be mentioned a couple times on your test. Date, again, June 6, 1944. And this was the Allied invasion to take Europe back from the Axis powers, mainly the Germans. Um, it began here. It began on D-Day. And it began with the, the Allied forces landing in Normandy, France, on the beaches. There were five beaches, if you guys remember. Um, and over, you know, eventually over a million men landed on mainland Europe to take back Europe from the Nazis. Next one is Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, we watched the video on this, the clouds over Cuba, and this was the standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union um, that brought us, you know, as close as we ever came to all-out nuclear war. Um, eventually, both sides backed down and decided to scale back their, their uh, nuclear weapons. Again, this involved um, John F. Kennedy and, and Khrushchev. Results of the stock market crash of 1929, um, immediate, immediate results were that the thousands of American banks had to close their door. Um, they, they could not return the money that people had deposited in, in the banks, so they had to close. And eventually, um, during the New Deal, FDR create, uh, created the bank holiday where he you know, set out to fix those banks. Next one is domino theory. So this was during the Cold War, and it was a theory by President Eisenhower, um, and most of it was associated with Southeast Asia, and, and basically said, you know, if one nation falls to communism, then all the nations around it will subsequently fall like a row of dominoes, and we kind of used this um, to shape our policy after World War II and, and kind of said, you know, any country that thinks about becoming communist, we're going to intervene, and we end up doing that. Um, in a couple of cases, specifically Korea and Vietnam. End of the Vietnam War, um, we talked about this, said the U.S., you know, we eventually signed a peace treaty. President Nixon signed the peace treaty, and immediately when we left, the North Vietnamese took over. Um, there's the lasting image of the helicopter leaving the U.S. Embassy in Saigon. But we, we did sign a peace treaty. President Nixon signed it, said peace with honor. Um, but when we left, North Vietnamese took over. The Great Depression, when did it end? Um, as we said, you know, World War II didn't. We don't want to say that a war uh, got us out of a depression, um, but on its own, 
but you know we did use the the timing of World War II as as kind of saying the Great Depression is completely over. Start of World War II uh, we look at officially as uh, the date September 1, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. That was the official start of World War II. Back to Vietnam again, um, the Tet Offensive. This was the the Vietnamese New Year, uh, the major attack on all U.S. positions in every major southern city. In South Vietnam, they pushed us all the way back, um, almost you know, to the border, to the ocean. Um, in South Vietnam, Vietnam, this happened in January 1968, and this was looked at, you know, as a major defeat for the U.S. and South Vietnamese, and really turned the public, you know, against the U.S. government if it was not already um, in that attitude. Marshall Plan. This was post-World War II, uh, named after George Marshall, and the goal was to create stable democracies around Europe, um, you know, and even further, that could resist communism and buy goods from the U.S. So, you know, one of the things we focused on was all those countries that were defeated by the Nazis. We wanted to set up democracies in those countries. They could resist communism and buy goods from us. Um, while at the same time we would re we would help them rebuild from World War II. Adolf Hitler, as we all know, fascist dictator of Germany, World War II, buying on credit. This was a practice of many Americans during the 20s, which got us into a lot of trouble. Um, people were using credit cards irresponsibly, well, not cards, but using credit um, irresponsibly, thinking that you know they could pay it off later. And in reality, this was one of the big causes of the Depression. Uh, Joseph McCarthy, he was um, an American during the 1950s that you know was known for something called McCarthyism, and what this what he did was encouraged a widespread fear of communism in the U.S. and was responsible for uh, prosecuting several people who he thought were committing treason and trying to bring communism to the U.S. Let's scroll down here, um, the FDIC. This was. Uh, an insurance provided by the government um, on any money that you deposit into banks. So this was a response to the crash of 1929 and was designed to put trust back into the banking system of the U.S. Italy and Germany during World War II, um, these were the Axis powers and they both declared war on the U.S. following Pearl Harbor. Next one is Kent State University, and this was on our LTJ, so we should be familiar with this. This was the site of the shooting of four college students um, at the University in Ohio during Vietnam War protests, where four college students were killed by National Guardsmen. Tonkin Gulf Resolution. This was what we called John, President Johnson's blank check um, that kind of gave him the authority to enact a full-scale war in Vietnam, and what we, we really kind of have figured out since then it was um, a few shots fired on U.S. destroyer U.S. destroyer boats by North Vietnamese patrol boats. Um, you know that really allowed us to really do whatever we want and gave the president more power than than he's ever had. And we have changed this since um, with a resolution that says you know Congress has to approve war before we actually declare war. World World War II what was the impact of civil rights? Um, it just brought the topic uh, into you know the public a little bit more, made the topic of discrimination more discussed, uh, caused Southern whites to become more sympathetic to African Americans who fought in the war. Battle of Britain. This was Germany's sustained bombing of Britain in 1940 when Britain was all by itself, um, and really, you know, if they wouldn't have held out, we had the "Keep Calm, Carry On" by Winston Churchill. There's really no telling what would have happened. Warsaw Pact and NATO, these were the two rivaling alliances during the Cold War. Um, the U.S. associated with NATO, USSR was associated with the Warsaw Pact. Berlin Airlift, this was President Truman's response to the Soviet blockade of West Berlin where we supplied food, fuel, medical supplies to the people, allowed us to keep our, our stronghold in West Berlin. Uh, the Berlin Wall was built in 1961 by the Soviet Union to keep East Berliners from escaping to democracy um, in the West. The Korean War, um, 
basically the, the question on the test will ask about the outcome, and the outcome was basically that Korea remained divided at exactly the same place it was divided before the war. Brown versus Board, civil rights. This overturned Plessy versus Ferguson. Um, it said separate but equal is no longer okay. The problem was the facilities were never really equal, and this is considered the birthplace of the modern civil rights movement. Cold War in general was something that was characterized by political conflict and military tension between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Vietnamization, um, this is Nixon's policy of replacing American forces with South Vietnamese soldiers, kind of turning the war over to them. Blitzkrieg was Hitler's strategy um, of lightning war, quick, fast, before they could react, used it on Poland to start World War II. Sit-ins were peaceful pro protest strategies used to desegregate lunch counters and restaurants in the South. The end of World War II came with the bombing of two Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We dropped the atomic bomb on both of them. What happened to Japanese Americans during World War II? They were placed in internment camps in the U.S. And this was, you know, really due to long-held prejudice and fears inflamed by um, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mussolini, he was the fascist dictator of Italy during World War II. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was the main supply route for the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong forces fighting in South Vietnam. Island hopping strategy was the strategy of the U.S. during World War II, uh, used to put allies in position to bomb Japan, brought us closer. Uh, Winston Churchill, leader of Britain during World War II, he also pro proclaimed that an iron curtain that separated communist Eastern Europe from capitalist Western Europe after World War II during the Cold War. 24th Amendment, talked about this in civil rights, prohibited poll taxes, allowed everybody to vote. 1964 Civil Rights Act uh, made discrimination illegal in public places and with employment, protected against discrimination based on race, gender, and age, among other things. Manhattan Project, the goal was to develop an atomic bomb during World War II. Holocaust was the imprisonment and mass genocide of Jews and other concentration camps before and during World War II. Um, Ho Chi Minh was the leader, uh, nationalist leader, who led Vietnam against the French. FDR, obviously, was the U.S. president during the Great Depression and World War II. He was the only president elected more than two times. Hoover's strategy for the Depression uh, was to let the economy fix itself and use local government charities to help the unemployed. The Holly Smoot Tariff uh, was something that tried to encourage people to buy um, domestically by American. It actually caused international trade to slow and it ended up being one of the things that made the depression even worse. Why did the U.S. get involved in Vietnam? Um, the original reason was to help the French reestablish their dominance in Southeast Asia, um, but the real reason again was to stop the spread of communism. And the last one, Rosie the Riveter, was the World War II symbol uh, for American women, and she's kind of gone on to be remain a symbol today of, of feminism and kind of women's equality and women's rights. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, I know went fast through it, but I think you guys will be able to pause it and slow down and, and kind of look through those things. The test, again, is, is going to be 60 questions, multiple choice. Um, there's not quite 60 topics on this review, um, but some of the topics are obviously going to be asked about in more than one question, and um, I encourage you guys to ask questions if you have them of me. Otherwise, prepare to the best of your ability. Uh, and good luck on the test, guys. I know you're all going to do well. Um, just make sure you prepare as best you can. Good luck.